The starter set is amazing for trying out Dungeons and Dragons for the first time. But how is the adventure that comes inside? What makes The Lost Mind of Phandelver truly a great first adventure to learn with? Let's dive in and find out. Now The Lost Mind of Phandelver is designed to take the pre-generated characters in the box from level 1 to level 5, touching on all three main pillars of role-playing games. Combat, exploration, and role-playing. Now I think the way the adventure is laid out in this book is perfect for introducing new players and new dungeon masters to how Dungeons and Dragons works. The very beginning of the book gives a dungeon master some background about the adventure itself and the location in which it takes place. After providing a few sample hooks on how the adventures may have all met each other, it's going to encourage the DM to have the players introduce themselves to each other and it jumps right into the adventure. Spoiler alert, this video is going to have information that players of Lost Mine of Phandelver shouldn't know about. So only continue to watch this adventure if you are going to run Lost Mines of Phandelver as a dungeon master. This adventure is in four parts. Part one is the shortest and it jumps right into combat to get everybody interested. I mean, when you have visions of sitting down and playing Dungeons and Dragons for the first time, you expect you're going to fight some monsters, right? Well, that's what this adventure does right away. You're jumping right into being ambushed by goblins. Since it's likely the first time you're playing, there's plenty of instructions on here on which text box to read aloud, which text is for the dungeon master's eyes only, and step by step how to go through that very first initial combat. There's even advice on how the goblins are going to behave in the fight, which are the monsters that the dungeon master is going to be controlling. So that way he or she knows how they're going to behave in this fight. Once that initial fight is resolved, there's lots of useful information where if the players decide to do this, then as a dungeon master do this. Or if they decide to do this instead, you're going to want to do this. So there's a lot of advice in here to get you going right away and help you make those decisions. Now after the ambush, the players are going to head to the hideout. This is the first time the dungeon master is introduced to a map in the book, but it explains in the box right down here that these maps are not for the players to see in this adventure because there are secret doors and hidden traps and things like that on the maps. You're going to use the maps as a dungeon master to just describe what the players see so that they can use their imagination. Or if you want, you could get some graph paper and have the players draw the map as you explain it, or you could draw it for them. Now, as the players continue on, each time a new rule is introduced, it's going to refer you to the page in the rule book that's in the box. So if you have any questions about how that mechanic works, you can just flip there real quick and look it up. And remember, if this is your first time playing Dungeons and Dragons or your 101st time playing Dungeons and Dragons, there's nothing wrong with stopping to check the rule book to double check something. Lastly, in part one of this adventure, the players are likely to rescue an NPC. And there's a lot of information and advice in the booklet on how the dungeon master is going to run that NPC. It will give you a little bit of background information about that non-player character and things that they know that they might share with the characters, any type of stat block that they might use, or even any weapons they might have. If you enjoy all things Dungeons and Dragons, tips, tricks, unboxings, and reviews, you're going to want to make sure that you hit the subscribe button down below and that notification bell so you don't miss any epic upcoming videos. I want to be sure to point out that even though once you open up the starter set and take out this adventure and you take a quick skim through it and it's over 60 pages, I don't want you to be overwhelmed because you need to understand there's Appendix A and Appendix B in the back taking up quite a few pages. And even the rest of the adventure, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons adventures are worded as if the players do this, then this happens. If they decide to do this instead, then this happens. Or maybe they decide to do this and they completely skip all that. So just because there's a lot of text and a lot of pages, don't necessarily think that your players are going to do absolutely everything in the book. You actually may end up using 
two thirds to three quarters of the book where the other third or quarter actually gets left out because the players didn't do that option or cover that area. So don't be intimidated by how many pages there are. I guarantee you, you're not going to use all of them. Now, once the players finish part one, they've done quite a bit of combat and a little bit of exploration. But part two is where they actually journey into the town of Phandalin. Taking the party into a town is a really fun experience. There's a lot of opportunity to talk to different people and NPCs that are running various establishments in the town. It's also a great place to pick up rumors and get leads for side quests or even the big main quests. The book provides lots of great information on the town itself and even a list of important NPCs, non-player characters, and where they can be found and if they're going to provide the party with additional side quests. In this part of the book, there's also a lot of information on how to guide their players towards certain areas if they seem to be shying away from areas where you need them to know something or find something or continue on the main quest. Or if your players just aren't sure what to do next, there's plenty of advice in here on how to just kind of nudge them in the right direction. And remember with the side quests, your party doesn't even have to do any of them or some of them or all of them. So you may not use all the pages found in part two of this adventure. If your players decide to go this route, part two also has a lot of opportunity for combat as the town that they're in is kind of being overrun by a gang of red brands. Now, as the players finish up part two and head into part three, if they've done a, quite a few side quests or some of them or dealt with the red brands, they possibly have acquired quite a bit of treasure, including money. This is a great opportunity for them to utilize the shops that are in town where they can maybe purchase some extra equipment and things before they head on to the next part. Actually, in the starter set rule book that comes in the box as well, on pages 16 through 19, there's all sorts of armor, weapons, and equipment that your players could purchase at different vendors that they find in town before they move on to part three. Now, part three of the adventure book is where you're gonna find all the side quests that the players could have acquired when they were doing part two. In addition, part three also introduces a new feature to the game, random encounter tables. This gives the dungeon master an opportunity to roll on a random table to see what type of monsters or what type of situation the players encounter. What I like about this is as you can tell, they're slowly building you up into the rules. A lot of the published adventures that you might purchase might start with having random encounter tables right in the beginning and shops and all sorts of things. Whereas, the starter set literally starts you off with some combat to get you hooked, but slowly eases into different rules. So we've gone from having some combat to doing some exploration to a little bit of role playing in town and some shopping maybe even. And now we're getting into things like random encounter tables, but it's not all added at once in the beginning. It's a little bit here and there when you're ready for it. Adventurers, if you're enjoying this video, can you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, give us a like, it really helps support the channel a lot. In part three, the adventurers journey on to Cragmaw Castle. Now here the maps are getting bigger, there's a lot more exploration going on, and there's a lot more monsters to deal with. So you can tell things are gradually getting bigger and bigger, maybe bigger fights, more terrifying and harder monsters where combat tactics are gonna come into play a little more until we get up to the grand finale in part four. Now part four of the adventure is gonna have the biggest dungeon that the players have experienced yet. There's some really tough monsters, a lot of undead and some serious bosses. In this part of the adventure, you've got plenty of opportunity for all three pillars, combat, exploration and role-playing. The players are gonna start part four at least at level four, and when they finish it, they can level up to five. Part four is gonna to tie together all the loose ends and bring the story to a conclusion. And remember, at the end of the book, you've got Appendix A full of magic items that the characters can find in the adventure, and Appendix B full of all the monster stat blocks that you're gonna to need to run the adventure as a dungeon master, including two full pages on how to actually read those stat blocks and what all the numbers mean. 
The back cover here even has a rules index, which takes you to the right page of the rule book to find a rule quick and easy. So those are all the reasons that I think Lost Mind of Phandelver is a great introductory starter adventure for players that just want to learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons for the first time right out of the box. Characters are already created here and there's a lot of variety to choose from. And rules are introduced slowly where you don't have to know everything all at once. They get you hooked right off the bat with some combat and then add in some exploration, some role playing and additional rules slowly as you go and a great ending to the story. This one is surely bound to get players hooked and want to play another adventure after this. Now for the epic question of the day, I want to know, have you played The Lost Minds of Phandelver? Do you have the starter set? Or maybe do you have the essentials kit? Let me know in the comments down below if you have this and if you're going to play Lost Mine of Phandelver. I also want to hear from you if you've already played from it and what you thought. Also let me know in the comments if you'd like a review like this of the adventure that's inside the essentials kit. Now if you're still trying to decide between purchasing the starter set or the essentials kit and you can't seem to decide. I have a video that goes over the contents of both of those boxes, everything that comes in the kit, so you can make a better decision and you can find that video right up here. Next, you're gonna wanna check out one of the videos on the next screen, so go ahead and give it a click and I will see you in that video. Now go have an epic adventure.